Hello, human geographers. We are back at it again this evening. Tonight, we're going to be looking at cultural patterns and their effects. We'll begin by looking at patterns associated with language. Language is a system of communication through the use of speech, a collection of sounds understood by a group of people to have the same meaning. And geographers often group languages together by their common ancestry, what they call a language family, which is a collection of languages thought to have descended from a single common ancestral tongue long before recorded history. So let's look at the data. The largest language family is Indo-European with nearly half the world's people speaking one of its many languages. The second largest is Sino-Tibetan, driven by the most commonly spoken first language in the world, Mandarin Chinese. In fact, the nine largest language families represent 95% of all people. So let's look at the spatial pattern of some of these prominent language families. Indo-European is spoken on all of the continents and is dominant in Europe, Russia, North and South America, Australia, and parts of Southwestern Asia and India. But there's plenty of diversity within the Indo-European language family. For example, there are eight major branches of Indo-European. The Indo-Iranian branch includes languages like Farsi, spoken in Iran, and Hindi, spoken in India. The Balto-Slavic branch includes Russian, Polish, and Croatian. The Germanic and Romance branches have diffused the farthest. The Germanic branch includes German and Dutch, but also English, which is spoken around the world. The Romance branch also has diffused far, as Spanish, French, and Portuguese are spoken across several continents. The Sino-Tibetan language family is widely spoken in East Asia and parts of Southeast Asia. The Niger-Congo language family is especially influential in Sub-Saharan Africa, where 95% of the population speaks a Niger-Congo language. Swahili is a very widely spoken language within this family. The Afro-Asiatic language family is spoken across North Africa and Southwest Asia, in a region often called the Middle East. Two prominent languages within the Afro-Asiatic language family are Arabic and Hebrew, both languages with strong connections to the Middle East. So now, let's take a look at patterns associated with religion. Religion is a system of beliefs and practices that attempts to order life in terms of culturally perceived ultimate priorities. Whether that is to make it to heaven or reaching a state of enlightenment, there is some ultimate goal that structures the beliefs and practices of religious followers. And before we can talk about where religions are located now, we have to start with where they began. There are three major herds that we can identify, but as always, details vary depending on the source. The Middle East hearth is the hearth for Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, what are commonly called the Abrahamic religions due to their shared history traced back to Abraham. The North India hearth is the hearth for Hinduism and Buddhism, as well as Sikhism. Finally, the East Asian hearth is home to Shintoism, but also the Chinese philosophies of Confucianism and Taoism. So now that we know where these religions began, let's look at where they have spread to. This map shows the distribution of different religions around the world. It also adds pie charts to help illustrate the homogeneity or diversity of religion within a region. Notice that Hinduism and Judaism have remained relatively clustered near their hearths, while Buddhism, Christianity, and Islam have spread to encompass areas far from their hearths. 
And for Christianity and Islam, the two religions with the largest global following, the major branches are separated on our categorical map. Islam has two major branches. Sunni is found in gray and is the clear majority of the Muslim world. The other branch is seen in pale green, and that's the Shia or Shiite branch of Islam. It makes up no more than about 50% of all Muslims, although they do make up a majority of the population in four countries, Iran, Iraq, Azerbaijan, and Bahrain. Switching to the branches of Christianity, notice the dominance of Roman Catholicism in Latin America. The Eastern Orthodox branch is prominent in Eastern Europe, including the Greek Orthodox and Russian Orthodox churches. Protestantism is prominent in areas colonized by Northern Europe, particularly Great Britain. So notice it in North America, Australia, and parts of Sub-Saharan Africa. Now, let's change the scale and look a little more closely at religion in the United States. Two Protestant denominations, the Baptists and the Methodists, are most common in the Southeast and Midwest, respectively. Baptists are red, Methodists green on our map. Lutherans live primarily in the upper Midwest where their German or Scandinavian ancestors migrated to. Many Mormons live in or near Utah, where Mormons settled in the mid-1800s after religious persecution drove them out of Missouri and Illinois. Roman Catholics are common in areas influenced by Southern Europe, so the Southwest, which was colonized by Spain, or Louisiana, which was colonized by the French. Cultural traits, such as language, religion, and ethnicity, can be important for personal identity, but also for the identity of a place. Cultural patterns contribute to a sense of place, the distinctive and important characteristics that help make a place stand out and demonstrate pride. For example, Iran is distinctive because it has an overwhelmingly Shiite population which primarily speaks Farsi, an Indo-European language that is different from the Afro-Asiatic dominated Middle East. An ethnic enclave such as Chinatown demonstrates a strong sense of place with unique architecture, restaurants, and signage written in Chinese characters. Theaters, street markets, restaurant districts, community parks, shopping districts, and public art displays all contribute to an area's sense of place. And each, in turn, is influenced by the cultural traits of the area. Even toponyms, place names, can demonstrate the distinctive and important influences on a place. Look at the many place names in California. San Francisco, San Diego, Los Angeles. Each of these toponyms represent the influence of Spanish language, as well as the importance of Roman Catholicism in mentioning Saints Francisco and Diego and the angels. Each cultural trait can contribute to the development of an area's sense of place. But sense of place isn't just something that happens. Place making is the process whereby a community or cultural group works to plan and develop that sense of place. Mecca has long been the most sacred place within the Muslim world. It is the center of annual pilgrimages. But as the Muslim population has grown and economic development and tourism sparked growth in Mecca, the landscape has evolved and changed. Notice the construction cranes outside the Great Mosque. This photograph is an interesting and certainly unique intersection between the ancient site of a major world religion and modern development. And while cultural patterns can make a place distinctive, they can also work to bring people together or pull people apart.
Centripetal forces are forces that tend to bind together the citizens of a state, thus promoting its unity. Remember, these forces bring or hold people together like petals on a flower. Centrifugal or centrifugal forces, however, are forces that tend to divide a country, threatening the unity of a state. Because if somebody told you F you, you wouldn't want to be around them anymore. You would pull away. Centrifugal or centrifugal force. Cultural forces can serve to bring people together. If everyone speaks a common language, like German, or identifies as ethnically Japanese, or practices the same religion, like Roman Catholicism, that can be a unifying force at multiple scales, from the state all the way down to the local. Recall that Iceland was designated as a nation state. It was a good example of a nation state where cultural identity matched up with the political boundaries of the country. Most people in Iceland speak Icelandic, follow Lutheranism, a Protestant denomination, and identify as ethnically Icelandic. That helps to hold the country together culturally. On the other hand, Cultural forces can divide as well. Many countries or regions do not speak just one language or practice a single religion. While we noticed earlier that India was still the primary location of Hinduism, a religion that could be a unifying force for nearly 80% of India's population, Islam and Sikhism attract millions of adherents in India. In fact, over 160 million people in India are Muslim, making India the third largest Muslim country in the world behind Indonesia and Pakistan. That has created conflict in the past when India gained independence from British colonial rule and when the modern countries of India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh were formed. It still remains contentious in the region of Kashmir, which both India and Pakistan claim, but has a large Muslim population and a Hindu minority. In the Caucasus Mountains, the physical geography has separated people such that many different languages from three different language families have developed. While that might hold together these small isolated communities because they speak one language, it has pulled them away from each other and from the state as a whole because relatively few people speak a common language. And in the United States, there is no single language that is required to be spoken. There is no official language in the United States. So many people speak another language at home. This map shows that Spanish and Native American languages are the most common when English is not spoken widely at home. But remember, just the presence of multiple languages is not automatically a centrifugal force. A bilingual community can create a strong sense of place for some in the community, a force that could hold it together, while others may feel left out, something that can be divisive. Always remember to look at the context of that particular geographic phenomenon. That's all for tonight, everyone. I'll see you all back in class.